Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Player's Take, episode 133. I'm your host, Justin Lisamoni, joined by my co-host. He is a Blood Elf Paladin, Montreal Rice. Hey, what's up? How's it going, man? How are you doing? Uh, just super tired today. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's been a... Uh, it's been a weird week, <laughs> I'll say. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, how are you doing otherwise? Um, just, I'm super tired. <laughs> I'm just super <laughs> tired. I've been running around all day, uh, going to different job sites and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm just. It was okay when we switched it. The day I said we can switch it, and mm. then once I got to today, I was like, "Oh fuck, I gotta do a podcast today." So, <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're recording on a we're recording on Wednesday uh, this week instead of Thursday because I um, I needed to switch the day because I have a I have a fantasy draft tomorrow that I otherwise would have been doing during the show that I didn't want to do that. So you know, Montreal was kind enough to accommodate me, but you know, here we are. Uh, so, but, uh, I mean, much, let's just, let's just get talking, man. I mean, uh, there's not a lot going on this week, but, um, there's something happening. Uh, I want kind of want to, you know, pick your brain on, uh, is, uh, streamers are starting to leave Twitch, man. Um, we've got, I mean, this happened a few years ago with Mixer, you know, uh, we reported on the podcast with like Ninja Shroud, uh, a few other big ones actually at the time and it didn't seem to make a dent in twitch at then and uh ultimately they ended up back on twitch because microsoft gave up on mixer but um youtube gaming uh google has not given up on that and uh tim the Tapman and dr lupo which are two pretty large streamers i'd say at this point uh have both signed exclusive deals with youtube gaming this week to stream um do you and and then with all the the all this, all the, because today was the day where uh, a lot of streamers were, uh, you know, doing their boycott, stream boycott or whatever, where they weren't streaming uh, to kind of like um, protest Twitch's response to a lot of hate raids and and other things that have been happening with uh, minority streamers. Um, do you think this is the beginning of something happening with Twitch, or is this just a drop in the bucket? Uh, I think this is the beginning of something happening with Twitch. Um, a lot of um, <clears throat> what a lot of people don't know is a lot of people went to a lot of streamers of color went to Mixer because mm. we felt as uh, we felt as though Mixer was like a better platform and it was easier to get started on. And Microsoft actually had a lot of good stuff in place for streamers of color and just smaller streamers in general. Um, so that's why a lot of people went over to Mixer. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately when Mixer went down, they were forced to migrate into Twitch and you had to build your own Twitch community. Um, you know, which is not bad. And I'm not saying like, you know, you need a, uh, what you call it? What's the word I'm looking for? Affirmative action Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, there was a disproportional amount of people not watching, you know, people of color or streamers compared to, um, you know, white streamers or, you know, Asian mm-hmm. streamers. Oh, like, mm-hmm. those are the those are the dominant forces. If you weren't, like, Eastern Asian, and if you weren't white, you were not topping the charts. Um, and there were only a handful of streamers to, to kind of top that, which was, like, you know, Tyler One uh, being one of them and uh, some other people. Uh, so, like, this has been a long time coming. The hate raid thing, I've just found out about that. And if I was a streamer, like, you know how I am, though. Like, I'm kind of like a dark humor type person. I wouldn't fucking care. Like, I'd be mm-hmm. like, bring it on. Like, it's more views for me, bitch. I don't fucking care. Mm-hmm. Um, but I understand that a lot of people are triggered by that. They weren't really raised in the era of online gaming that I was raised in. Mm-hmm. So, like, stuff like that kind of gets under their skin. Whereas, whereas to me, I was kind of, I was raised in it. I was bred in it, you know, like mm-hmm. Bane. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, um, oh, don't bring him up. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Wade. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I get it, I, and I think uh, this is the new wave. I mean, they already got Doctor Disrespect. Uh, I think Twitch is what's the word I'm looking for? Damn, I had a good analogy for it, but they're like, they're like, their you shit doesn't stink. Bridges? 
Yeah, their shit, they think their shit doesn't stink. Mm -hmm. They they can just, you know, shit everywhere and it doesn't stink. And Mm -hmm. I think now a lot of people are like, I can't deal with this. Like, their rules still aren't clear cut. Uh, There's still shit just going wrong randomly. You can get banned at the drop of a hat. And it's not it's not cool at least on at least on youtube like you can stream gun content and stuff like that you can you know mm. you can be a, a gun streamer and like you build can't guns do that on, on twitch you can't do that if you show your firearm on twitch that's you crazy, get banned man. instantaneously yeah that's insane dude twitch is i mean you're right uh twitch has become a little bit too big for the britches uh in recent years like because it i mean ever since dr disrespect got uh got banned off the platform uh i feel like that was kind of the moment that really shined a light on how little like consistency they seem to have and transparency too because they did that and they've we don't know why he was banned we still don't know it's been like what (laughs) two years dude since that happened like it and and that is insane that that's the case and he's actually suing twitch like he he actually put uh a lawsuit for uh forth um suing them over what happened and like we still don't know i'm sure the reasoning will come to light if that case actually goes forward and becomes a public uh case but it's kind of crazy to me that they were able to do that to somebody as big as he is with no they didn't even tell him it's not about making it public like they didn't they don't need to publicly tell anybody but they didn't Mm -hmm. tell him why he was banned you know um yeah and that that's insane like it's the dude's livelihood you know like straight up there's plenty of people with li- that have livelihoods on twitch and they let shit get they let certain things slide on twitch that i think is borderline like all the all the hot tub stuff going on right now and and the the, the titty streamers or whatever you want to call them like there's no there seems to be no regulation on that <laughs> you know they can do whatever they want almost you know and um it like you know some of that crazy uh pornographic esque stuff that some streamers were doing too and and it feels like as far as i know some a lot of them aren't getting banned you know um and so i i don't know i think i think this has like been a long time coming for twitch they they just youtube gaming is like the only competition really right now and there needs to be more out there i think that's the problem is just there's just not enough other co- competitive platforms but I've, I've been thinking about this lately because I know we've been toying with the idea of streaming both of us is like um, I like part of me kind of just wants to do it on YouTube. You know, um, it's I, like I a more think it's more accessible. We can do it on both. Actually, I used to do that. There used right. to be a program where you can do it on both. So I don't mind doing it on both at all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, I mean, I think we should do it on YouTube as well. Um, we can do it on both at the same time simultaneously okay. until like we get big and or we get some kind of partnership where we have to like you know choose one or the other and if mm-hmm. youtube comes first I, which i'm really hoping then i'm gonna go with youtube because they're more they're less lenient on a lot of shit yeah uh then then twitch yeah twitch is right now i don't like the i don't want to be like oh you know be dramatic here but they're a tyrannical empire as far as streaming goes they just don't <laughs> fucking care yo like uh, yeah like they're yeah. they're they're poc streamers getting banned for no reason like um say like they kick a racist person out that racist person can have like a bots or whatever report their account and then they get banned and then twitch won't unban it i've seen it happen so it's like uh they just need to do something about it and the simple fact like they they let they let POCs like they let black people. I don't want to say POCs in this instance. Where I'm, this is an example. They let black people say the N word on stream because they realize it's a part of our culture and things of that nature. So I appreciate that. Um, but before they were banning black people for saying the N word, like mm-hmm. you know, just in the way that we, in the context that we use it or whatever. So, um, or maybe it's because a lot of other races really aren't watching uh, black streamers. Like I know a lot of black streamers. We have a lot of black people now who are watching streams and streams is becoming really popular within the black community now. Um, So a lot of streamers are having their own mini communities and things of that nature. And I appreciate that and Twitch. Um, But I just feel like that was all of a sudden. I I feel like Mixer was just so much better for uh, people of color streamers and smaller streamers because it was such an easy market to break into. And uh, they had some they had the exact same tools as 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 Twitch. 
um, but it was just, it wasn't Twitch. So um, YouTube is a little bit different. I mean, YouTube is definitely breaking the barriers. Uh, I just don't think they have their tools need to be a little bit easier to use. Um, yeah. If they can manage that, then they can easily eclipse Twitch because they have the infrastructure already in place. There are a lot of people already making videos. They already clipped their videos and then put it on YouTube. Like that's the new, that's the thing now. If you're a streamer, you clip your videos, you clip the best parts of it, and then you put it on YouTube and people can watch like a compilation of you or whatever. And uh, that's actually how I got into Twitch. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't just jump into Twitch. I jumped into Twitch because I was watching like a compilation of like a, um, one of my jungler uh favorite junglers i was watching and how funny he was on twitch and i'm like oh well he live streams so i'm just gonna fucking watch him when he live streams so um it's definitely like a, a pipeline there and i think youtube can actually sever that pipeline and just take full control of it if twitch doesn't get their their shit together yeah i agree um yeah, and I mean, YouTube obviously has their own integrations with their own platform that are probably better than Twitch. So um, I think that's that's an advantage that YouTube has um, with the VOD space. So, you know, we'll see how this evolves, but um, it's kind of an interesting thing. I, I do think there is a sentiment right now that people are just fed up with Twitch in general, viewers and streamers alike. So I think we'll... I think there will definitely be more uh, with this moving forward. I do not think this is a drop in the bucket, but um, we'll see. So, all right, Montro, let's get into the, the show proper here. Um, so, for those of you who haven't listened before, this is our weekly show where we talk about video games, video game news, and other topics pertaining to video games. We post at 6 a.m. Central Time on Fridays on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and your favorite podcast app of choice. Uh if you'd like to send us a question, please do so at the players take zero one at gmail.com or you can send us a message on Twitter at the players take as well. We would appreciate that. We will integrate those into the show, answer your questions at the end of the show or during the show if it makes sense, if it's a topic we're going to talk about. Um, okay, <clears throat> Macho, let's uh, let's get started like we always do with what we have been playing. Uh, would you like to go first this week or do you want me to start? Well, you can start. Okay, uh, I've only been playing two games, um, and uh, I'm going to start with uh, World of Warcraft, um, TBC Classic, which I've been playing um, pretty heavily, I will say. Um, we started playing last week, like I mentioned on last week's show. Uh, with the intent to raid, uh, I've had a weird journey with WoW in the last week, though. Uh, we've we played a lot. Um, I'm level 63, about to hit 64. Our friend Jed is 65. I think he's going to hit 66 tonight, probably. And then uh, Andy is uh, 64. He hit 64 yesterday, too. And um, we were all playing, like, pretty hard, like, leveling really, really hard. Um, and I kind of hit a wall yesterday with it where I'm kind of just, like, I'm not having fun. Um, because I'm playing the game in a really unnatural way, you know. I don't, I don't like playing WoW this way where I'm, like, obsessively leveling. Um, I do not enjoy this game that way. I never have. I've always been a player that likes to take it slow and kind of take my time and work on my professions and like do a lot of side activities while I'm leveling. Um, so I have actually made kind of decided uh, yesterday to kind of just slow down and uh, smell the roses, as I would say, I guess, um, on this. And I'm kind of focusing on things I want to focus on in the game. Um, I want to level. I do. But you know, I think our, our the friend that we the server we joined is a uh, we have another friend that was has been playing TBC Classic since it came out in June, and uh, he's got a raiding guild that we all joined. And you know, the intent was that we were all going to join his raid and like you know get into his uh, his guild raid and start raiding with his guild. But <clears throat> realistically, like me and Andy aren't probably aren't going to raid with his guild because their raid times just don't match up with our lifestyles like mm -hmm. they raid on tuesdays and thursdays from seven to ten central um which sounds fine on paper for uh tuesdays but for me like we record on thursdays and i really am not keen to move our recording day i really like recording on thursdays i think it works for us i think it's worked super well for us for the most part this is actually the first time we haven't recorded on a thursday since we made that switch and it feels weird, <laughs> um, you know, it, it like because, yeah, I, I, I felt 
the same as you today. I was kind of tired. You know, I was like, man, normally I wouldn't be recording today. It's just not mentally. I'm not like mentally there. I'm used to doing this on Thursdays now. Um, so I don't really want to move that day. And then uh, even on Tuesdays, like seven o'clock, if I'm working at the office um, on a Tuesday, that is like the absolute earliest I could get on and get on the raid. But I would literally have to drive home from my job drop my bag off, change real quick and immediately get on the game and get in, get into the raid. You know, I'd, I'd probably have to pre log out like in front of the raid um, that we're starting at the day before, because I would be late every week basically. Um, and I'm just like, I don't, I, I like, I don't think that's going to jive with his guild. And um, I also don't think I want to cater my lifestyle around that right now. So I think my plan with the game really is to I'm going to be a little bit more casual with it. I think I'm still going to try to raid like if his guild is a, like has off nights that they raid on like Friday or Wednesday or something um, and I can attend those. I will probably go to those, but I don't think I'm going to endeavor to be one of their main raiders. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah, it makes so, sense. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, I'm having fun with the game still. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's just. I think I think I'm already like burning myself out on it though because of the way, uh, particularly Jet's been playing. Jet's like been a fucking crazy person, dude. Like I've never seen him this obsessed with a game before. Like he he is legitimately lost his mind. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> bro, he's like staying up till like two or three a.m. every fucking night, like playing this shit, trying to level as fast as he can. You know, really? <clears throat> yeah, dude. And I'm like I'm like man, like I'm like i'm like chill out man like so it's kind of like putting me off a little bit uh to the point that i'm like i don't even want to try to keep up with him you know because i'm not going to and it's going to make me feel shitty so i'm literally like you know what i'm just going to take this at my own pace uh whatever that pace is if i if i take an extra week to get to 70 compared to him that's perfectly fine with me you know um and what it, it, it is what it is so i don't i don't know i don't I just want to play the game and have fun. You know, that's kind of where I'm at. So, okay. Um, uh, what about you though, man, you were going to play with us. Uh, what, what happened? Are you, you kind of like, you don't want to really want to play anymore or, or, uh, where are you at? I'm still like on the fence. I just, I don't, like I'm learning so much stuff right now as far as my new job and I'm doing some off, mm -hmm. um, off job studies and stuff like that. Off site studies and things of that nature. Like I just kind of really don't have time right now. Like, yeah, understood. Yeah, like when I'm logging in at like on Discord, like eight or nine o'clock, it's because I'm probably I just got done studying. So, um, yeah, I just been out of video games. Like it's crazy, um, mm -hmm. this whole week, and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> uh, I really want to get back to my video games, but it's like I, uh, especially like single player games. But I just been really, really hard to commit. I'm really, really scared to commit, rather. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm trying though. I'm trying to do something. Well, to make something um, move. yeah, that's another reason I don't want to, I don't want to go too hard at this because I like, I mean, I've been talking about this on the podcast for like three fucking months now, or three and a half months is I've been playing MMOs like crazy. It was final fantasy 14 first and then it was, uh, Ion, and now it's this. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I like, I like, I had almost instant regret, like committing to wow, uh, last week because I was like, you know, I was like, I started playing Hades pretty hard uh, after I quit Ion last week and I was having a lot of fucking fun. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I think I really want to get back into single player mode. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of hedge and I'm going to play WoW a bit here and there and when I feel like it. And then I'm just going to focus on single player, dude, because uh, Tales of Arise comes out next week. Uh, we got Deathloop in two weeks. Uh, Kenna comes out, I think, in three weeks. And then so does Diablo 2 Resurrected. So we've got, mm -hmm. I've got three, three or four games I literally legitimately want to play in the next three weeks coming out. Um, and I'm, I don't think I'm going to like forego doing all that just so I can play World of Warcraft, which I've literally played tons of hours of in the past. So, you know, I, I think I'm just going to be a little bit more chillaxed about it and, and uh, play what I want. You know, I got to get back to that mentality is like playing what I actually want to play. Uh, cause I really feel like I've been forcing myself to play games that I don't necessarily want to play every night, <laughs> you know? Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I got, you know, I got to get off that, that train, I think. So that's kind of where I'm at with wild, but, 
Um, I've also been playing Hades though on the side. Uh, that is the other game I've been playing, and uh, I have uh, finished. I've escaped uh, two more times since the last episode. I haven't played that much. I will say, once you escape once, it gets starts getting a lot easier to escape again. Um, not not for any particular reason other than you you kind of know the game better at that point, and you're you're like skilled more skilled at it. Um, you yeah. are leveling up more too, and you're getting more powerful that way as well, which makes it easier inherently. But um, the game is uh, this game's so fucking fun, dude. I'm like, I have no plans to put this game down anytime soon. Like, I'm I'm gonna continue playing it. Um, this is legitimately like, I can see why this was a game of the year candidate for people last year, uh, because it is that fucking good. Like straight up, um, like Montreal, I implore you to give this game a shot because. It's just like the run, like doing a run in this game is just so excellent. And it's like, I've been playing the game for probably 30 or 40 hours at this point. And yeah. the game has a uh, dialogue that happens um, between runs or during runs. And um, I'll be honest, I still haven't exhausted it all at this point. You would think you would, but like I continue to hear none of the lines I've heard at this point are repeated. Um, they're all unique. Like, they were coming a little bit more uh, sparsely than they were at the beginning, but they're still, I'm still getting new voice lines from most of the character, from pretty much every character um, in the game that you interact with. So it's a, uh, it's a really fun game. Uh, the six weapons are all really unique and they're all different. They have different uh, fighting styles, which is really cool. Um, it gives you a lot of variety where you don't like, I'm not sick of the game because each run I choose a different weapon. So it's like, I'm having to pivot the way I play every single run I go on, uh, which is really fun. So I don't know. I think it's just an excellent game. I think it has extreme amounts of replayability. I will say I have one gripe with it um, that is starting to starting to eat away at me a little bit is um, the bosses. Um, The bosses are pretty static. There's small, there's variations to each boss in each of the worlds that you go to. Um, There's four different, boss end bosses that you fight and there's a few other side bosses that you run into occasionally but um those four <laughs> bosses don't really change uh they you you will have variations of them um as you play through the game more but for the most part they're pretty much the same fight um and that that's like the one disappointing element to me because i did i did go kind of read to see if that ever changes and the answer is pretty much no it really doesn't um the only thing that changes is you will you will add parameters to your run that will make it harder for you to win. So you can like because once you escape once, a contract uh, appears in front of the exit to start a run, and you can set uh, parameters that make the run harder, but you get rewards for doing it. So you know you can do something like where enemies hit like twenty percent harder or have twenty percent more HP. You know, or you could stack both of those together and 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 make it super hard. You know. Um, so that's where you get your gameplay variation from. But, um, you know, so that that's like the one thing I can point out. I will say the bosses that do exist, though, are fun. Um, it's just that outside of two of them, the last two bosses, the first two sets of bosses um, in the first first world and the second world, um, I'm at the point where, like, I can kill them pretty easily uh, any run that I do. Like, I almost never don't get to the third area. It's really the third boss that's hard because it's you're fighting two guys at once and that's always difficult. Um, and that, that fight is just inherently hard. Um, okay. So <clears throat> that fight is still a challenge for me, but it is getting easier. I'm beating it more consistently than I was um, last week or the week before that. So um, eventually it's going to get to the point where I'm just like, I can beat this shit with my eyes closed probably if I play it enough. Um, and I'm, I'm worried that that's the burnout point with the game, but I'm not really there yet. So um probably not worth talking about but uh yeah so you know having fun with that i'm gonna keep playing that and then uh, hopefully i think tales comes out tuesday is that right or is it next friday or thursday uh, i think it's thursday it's the ninth right does it say the ninth or the tenth it's a weird date dude it's it's thursday the ninth and then um uh diablo 2 also comes out on thursday the 23rd which is a totally random day for releases. Like games usually come out on Tuesdays or Fridays. You know, Thursday is a fucking weird day, man, in my opinion. But um Yeah, it is. It's it's Thursday. I just checked it. Mm-hmm. So 
they used to release games on Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I do remember that way back in the day. Yeah. Um, and that was because like that's when patches fell down, fell in those days. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. um, that was so long ago. Like I, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, and then it turned into Fridays was like the international release day. Um, mm-hmm. If you were releasing your game globally or or in multiple territories, you release it on Friday. So yeah. I don't know. That's a weird date, but yeah, we got tails uh, next week. So I'm also going to be playing that. I'll have thoughts on that probably in two weeks though, I guess given the, the date. So, but uh much uh, what have you been playing, sir? Um, Oh shit. I thought I already talked about what I was playing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did. No, I you, I you gave it to me. Yep. Uh, just, I just been playing apex. That's literally all I've been touching. Oh, and I've been helping my friend climb in League of Legends. Um, mm-hmm. So I have a, I use my Smurf account and I'm helping him climb because he's a bronze. And then my like my that old account is like silver four or some shit like that. So he wants to get to silver or gold, and I'm just helping him climb um, while teaching him how to jungle. So that's been that's actually been fun. Um, it's been frustrating, but it's also been fun as well. Uh, just to teach somebody how to play the game, or not teach them how to play the game, but um, since I know how to jungle really good, as far as like you know, from uh, low elo perspective, from um, iron to platinum, I know how to jungle really well. Um, it's fun teaching them how to do that, um, but um, yeah, that's really all I've been playing. I haven't really been playing anything else. Like I said, it's, I I play those games because those are not hard commitment games. I can get in, get an hour or two of fun, and then get out. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas with like, if I I wanted to start a single player game, I might not be able to commit to it because um, I even stopped playing Ghost of Tsushima temporarily. But I I beat that game, so it's like I'm not really too stressed about it. I didn't want to start anything. Uh, that I can't commit to because, like, yeah, Tales of Arise, I think I'm going to really dig deep into that. I've just been looking for a good action game to, like, mm. dig deep into. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. All right, fair enough. Um, okay, well, let's move on to our next segment, the news. So uh, we only have one story this week, guys. It has been a really dry week of news. There's just not much happening right now. Um, I think TGS is in a week or two, and... People are talking about a Nintendo Direct maybe happening this month. We are kind of due for one of those, but um, <clears throat> I don't know. There's just not a lot going on right now. It feels like a real like dead period um, at the moment. So, uh, But the one story we do have is a big one because uh, on Monday, the Chinese government uh, ruled that minors under the age of 18 um, will be limited Going forward, this is already in effect. It went into effect uh, today, actually, day recording, um, that uh, minors will only be allowed to play video games for three hours per week. Now, this only affects, this clearly only affects online games that require a login of some sort um, because this uh uh daniel ahmad i think um i'm forgetting what outlet he's at but he uh he actually confirmed because people were asking him that specific question and he said that it currently does not affect single player console games at this time it only affects mobile games online games like league or stuff like that that require a login they will require an identity uh identification that goes through a system the chinese government has set up um in order for people to play those games Um, and it will track you if you're under the age of 18, it will track your time and you will be allowed to play one specific hour on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I believe it was eight to nine or something like that, uh, was the, was the, was the time frame. You don't even get to choose the period of time you get to play (laughs) on weekends. So, uh, this is a extreme measure. They, uh, the Chinese government did cite. Um, gaming addiction among young people as a reason why they are doing this, that they are concerned that it has gotten out of hand or is getting out of hand and they want to curb it uh, before that. However, um, this is still a very extreme action and has a huge impact on the gaming industry. Obviously, Um, a lot of money is made more than likely off of minors. um, And there are a lot of people in China that play video games 
And I'm sure that this is going to hit the pocketbooks of a lot of companies that operate in China. So, um, Montreal, I kind of want to just get started, I guess. Like, what are your overall thoughts on this uh, this development here on in China? Uh, I think this is their Achilles heel. They're, they want too much control of stuff. And uh, a lot of people aren't going li- to like that. And this is a significantly, I think, I know probably a lot of their downloads come from um, older plus 18 people. Um, but that is going to still kill a lot of their, their play time with younger folks, like three hours. That's crazy to me. I mean, that's <laughs> um, nothing, dude. That's, it's literally nothing like, you know, three hours is no time. But like in yeah, gaming and, terms, and they, like, yeah. And then what happens if they increase the, the age, like, Oh, we've, we've seen an increase in, um, you know, and addiction between adults from 18 to 25. So we're going to actually limit people who are 18 to 25 to like five hours a day or something like that. Right. So it's, it, there's no limit into what they can do. And uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of game companies should be wary of this before getting in bed with like a Chinese um, developer or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know. And then to see like kind of people defend it, I mean, I guess you're going to get into that later, but I, I don't know. It's it's really weird to me. Like it's it really makes me like appreciate where I live, <laughs> where I live, because yeah, like right. that's something that other governments can potentially just do, and right. we can't do anything about it. You can't vote on it or anything. There's just like it is what the fuck it is. Yeah, I mean, this has no effect on us, right? Like as Americans, but yeah, in terms of like as an individual playing video games, this has no real effect on us. But, um, it's, I mean, it has a, it has an effect though, in the sense of like it hurts the industry. Um, but we have been warning about this for the entire, you know, life of this podcast that this could happen. China can do whatever they want, you know, and getting in bed with them is a humongous risk that these companies are taking, taking Chinese money from Chinese corporations and, and, and putting their games in China and relying on Chinese money um, for profits is an extremely risky proposition, you know, and this is, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what they can do over there. You know, I mean, consoles were, were famously banned for like 15 years up until a few couple of years ago, you know, um, in China and that, you know, recently got lifted, but that they could, they could easily just bring that back whenever they want. You know, it's like, <clears throat> so I think, I think this is, I, I mean, I kind of hope that this is a warning to companies to really kind of slow down and chill out with the, with the, the the reliance on like Chinese money and taking money from companies like Tencent and, and letting yourself be purchased by a company like Tencent because um whatever happens over there could end up ultimately affecting your company. Um, you know, this pr- particular thing probably doesn't if you're not making an online game, but you know, it it eventually could in some ways where they where they force certain types of content into games or things like that. You know, you can only you can only show certain things, which we've seen happen before already, you know? So um, I just think this is like a huge kind of warning sign. And I don't know. I mean, I think the fact that this wasn't a bigger story in the gaming sphere is kind of crazy. Cause I really didn't see a lot of discussion on this, to be honest with you, man. Um, at least from my perspective. And then that continues a trend that I've noticed that it's just like gaming outlets. Like when I search for this uh, to put it in the show mm-hmm. outline, um gaming sites didn't come up it was all like it was like cnn and you know npr and like you know like actual news sites um Mm -hmm. that do journalism like those were the ones that this story was showing up on in google first i had to specifically search for certain video game sites to find the article like articles on this from them you know um and i find that kind of crazy but to your point you i mean you brought it up Um, while I was looking at this article, I saw Kotaku wrote a piece that, um, was basically in defense of this decision by the Chinese government. And I just don't, I just don't 
understand where that even comes from, you know, because the article cites a lot of what chi the Chinese government mentioned is the reasoning why it's like gaming addiction and things like that. But um, if you're worried about gaming addiction in your country, there are way more elegant ways to deal with that than this, you know, um, than, than, than making a hard, putting a hard restriction in on minors or anybody for that matter. Um, that is, a heavy handed uh, totalitarian approach to a problem, you know, and no offense to whoever wrote this article, but like that is not the way I think we should be solving problems in the 21st century. Um, there, there, there's just, there's just other ways the government could more effectively do this without completely taking it away from people who maybe have a healthy relationship with video games, which is probably the vast majority of people, you know, like, I mean, yes, gaming addiction is real, but I think there's better ways to deal with it. Yeah, I agree. Um, the simple fact that Kotaku was like wrote an article, but like this is not the first time I've seen that. I've seen people on Twitter defend it, like some uh, high level, um, I guess, journalists or influencers, gaming influencers, kind of defending it and everything of that nature. And I mean, it's kind of. It's kind of a, I, was, I don't know who I was talking with this about. It's kind of my point about this whole people are like fake communists. I don't, I, I don't know. It's, it's just weird. Yeah. And um, I understand like America has a lot of problems and everything of that nature, but I don't think to try to one up them and, you know, whatever. I don't think we should be defending stuff like this because it kind of. It just looks weird. And these could be bots. I, I mean, these could very well be bots. I know, but this shit. is an article. This particular one is an article published on Kotaku. You know? And, I mean, yeah, and I think, I think they're influenced by social media to do this. Like, they probably have people in their comments and mentions saying, do this, do this. And it's probably just bots. Because it's like, I don't know, what if you have a book addiction, right? Like, what if you just can't stop reading books? I, how can you regulate that? Or if you just can't stop watching movies? What if you can't w stop watching TV? I think TV addiction is a real thing. So it's like to defend this is essentially saying, yes, we want, I just don't want any regulation. And, and I don't want it, this is not a political podcast, but I don't want any type of regulation when it comes to like some of my hobbies because I think I should be able to regulate it on my, myself. Um, and I mean, kudos to China for sticking up for game addiction because we both talked about game addiction on the podcast and how mm -hmm. it's not taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think this is the wrong approach. Instead of like approaching this situation lightly, they just fucking they took the heaviest it. hammer they could to it and just yeah, the yeah, problem. like you know. exactly, yeah. It's, it, they didn't even try to you know do a, a step level approach. They just yeah, they just went all the way to the top level. And it's right. like, this is what we're going to do right here. So I don't well, they're, know. They're blanket. They're blanket. They're kind of, they're kind of like, uh, blanketing their whole, you know, society too. They're saying that this is a problem amongst all minors when that is probably not true at all, dude. You know? <clears throat> um, and I find this ironic too, from the nation that has really perpetuated, uh, the design of free to play games like the Chinese games are the ones that are the most egregious with microtransactions and free to play models that force you to play every day and, and you know, uh, really incentivize spending money in order to progress um, in any real way. Like, it's funny that that nation allowed these games to be made in the way they are. And then now is all of a sudden like, oh, wait, we don't like this. We don't like that you're playing these games this much. But it's like your games are the reason why people are playing this much you know mm -hmm. so i mean i don't know i the idea that we would be defending this <laughs> anyway like it hurts my brain dude i don't i i like this is like a trend that has become a thing there are people legitimate legitimate people and maybe some of them are bots maybe a lot of them are bots and they're just trying to stir up bullshit maybe it's all russian bots i don't fucking know but it feels like there are legitimate people that actually think the chinese government is doing the right thing in certain situations, including this one. And it's like, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that the Chinese government is always wrong hundred percent of the time, but 
there's very few moments in my life where I've been like, hmm, yeah, China approached that right. Remember, guys, this is the co- this is the same government that fucking like literally occupied Hong Kong two years ago that you were all up in arms about. Like, huh? Huh? Like, <laughs> like, do we forget you, that you so soon? I will be honest with you, right? I didn't see too many. Um, see, this is gonna make me sound like a fucking right wing conspiracy theory nut. <laughs> I didn't really see too many. Um, Left leaning people up in arms about that. I saw them actually complaining about that America Americans weren't sticking up for because um, at the same time, I think it was was it two years ago? No, it was like a year ago. It no, was two it was years, two years ago. ago, dude. All right, so yeah, this was before uh, all the protests it was, it across was, America. America, yeah, it was pre COVID, pre yeah, Black the, Lives Matter. Yeah, okay, there was another protest beforehand, but it wasn't as big. And uh, they were actually comparing it like, oh, so you guys can stick up for their civil liberties, but not ours. And I mean, they were making they were making good points with that. But that's the thing I was seeing, you know, so hmm. I I don't know <laughs> how to approach that. Yeah. Um, As far as that. But like, yeah, I, I, I've been seeing on the on the left hand side of the stratosphere. A lot of people are just like, oh, my God, this is. This is just amazing. China is just amazing. And it's just like, why? Like, why? I don't know, man. I can't explain and, it to you. And it's weird because I'm a left-leaning person. So it's like, why is this a thing? Like, can we not do this? I mean, I think there are people out there that really, um, on the left particularly, that want the government to have control. Like they, they are for government control. And that is a political, that is a political stance. Like, you know, you can have that stance. I just think there's like, there's kind of a line though. Like China crosses the line all the time. They have way too much control over the the lives of their citizens, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and the the United States government has control as well. They just do not exercise that control to such a degree they're not a totalitarian regime i know many people on the left like to pretend they are but (laughs) that's the irony is like you're gonna say that the u.s government is going too far sometimes and this is true on the right as well but then you're like you're you're gonna say not that the chinese government's not going too far when they do things like this like it just it doesn't make sense to me um it, it it's weird it's it's just it's weird man it's weird i don't remember we were talking about this i think this was on denison's podcast uh, the catch up cast a few weeks ago we were talking about people being influenced by china and uh and and by the internet in general and this is an example of that to me is that i feel like people just aren't like rational in in like what they're what they're even looking at you know here uh because it makes no sense to me to be in support of something like this you know uh, if the American government did this, I like, I, I would be fucking pissed, <laughs> you know. Uh, even if it didn't affect me and they only did it to minors, I would still be pissed, you know. Um, that would be a step way too far uh, for me. So I don't know, man. I think it's a, I think it's bad, but there's nothing we can do about it, unfortunately, except for criticize. So. Yeah, I it's such a weird it's such a weird thing. Like I don't like the whole thing with like um with China. I think we're sucking up to the wrong people. Like I said, it's yeah. it's so it's so much of a thing to stick it to America. And I understand, like I said, America has problems and we need to work on a lot of shit in America. But I just I don't think the enemy of my enemy is my friend in this case. You know, yeah. like I just don't think yeah. that. So and I think a lot of people are going with that concept, like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And I just really don't agree with it. Um, I think it's really scary and dangerous to do something like that. So, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, all right. Well, that's our that's our one news story for the week. <laughs> um, I'm sure there would I'm sure there's more we could talk about. But uh, unfortunately, I did not. We did not have time before the show to really uh, put the news together in a like big way so 
Um, well, it wasn't really too much news out there. Um, that's the thing too. We looked a little bit, but there's just there's just nothing going on, man. Like, yeah, I'm. I mean, we can't talk about this because we got like 15 minutes. I think I can spare 15 minutes because it's almost not an hour yet. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, I did see this one big streamer say, "Like, man, this game's been this year's been really dry for games. Like, oh man, games have been really dry." Mm-hmm. Um, and normally I would agree, but. I would have to disagree on that front. I haven't personally been playing a lot of indie games, but I've been seeing a lot of good indie games come out this year. Um, Cause he was talking about big games that, that are like making the industry rock. And I didn't really, I mean, yeah, he's right. I mean, there only been a handful, like maybe Ratchet and Clank, but like there wasn't really any like big drops this year. Um, in my opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong mm-hmm. as well. Um, I mean, Monster but, Hunter, I guess. Yeah, but that came and went, and we all know why that came and went, even though a lot of the Monster Hunter YouTubers and community doesn't want to admit it to themselves. They're fucking full of themselves. They don't admit that this is probably the worst release Monster Hunter within the last 15 years of Monster Hunter mm-hmm. or 10 years of Monster Hunter. Um, but uh, our, this is my hot tag for that, too. I think this is the worst release Monster Hunter since Monster Hunter Try. Boom, I said it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> fair enough. Um, but yeah, so I think um, I think this was the year of the indies, though. Like I've seen a lot of good indies that I've personally downloaded. I just haven't had time to play. Um, yeah, and yeah. I think uh, a lot of big streamers and personalities should kind of. I don't want to say watch their mouths what they say, and because I don't want to be that person like, oh, you got to consider all people. Don't be hurting feelings, but like. Kind of be more educated in what you say. Like, there's been a lot of good indies that came out that have shook that have shook indies, and I think um, even though Hades came out last year, I think Hades is one of those because a lot of people on console like yourself are playing Hades, oh, and yeah. it's like uh, that game shook the na- shook the nation. Like, people are like, "Whoa, I this mean, fucking game is right awesome. now." It's my game of the year right now. <laughs> yeah, Straight and up. I'm pretty sure. And there are some other indies out there that are tie for game of the year for other people so well axiom verge 2 just dropped like last week like randomly just dropped last week or the week before and that's a huge one dude that game was yeah. fucking huge so and then i was talking to one of my co-workers who's not really a gamer and he was playing 12 minutes and he said he loved 12 minutes he was like man i i love this game it's it's just a really good game and everything of that nature so mm-hmm. i think all these uh indie games that are dropping this year are I think it's really cool because a lot of good, a lot of big, bigger games couldn't come out. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, I, I mean, I'd say I agree with the sentiment in regards to like AAA games. I think AAA games have been light this year. We've had a ton of delays um, into 2022, and I think the beginning of 2022 is going to be fucking insane. Like, like legitimately. I mean, we already seen. Like the middle of February to the middle of March is packed with fucking triple A games coming out within a four week time frame. But uh, the year's not over yet, though. I mean, we were talking about this earlier in the show, like uh, the four games I mentioned, you know, we've got Tales, Kenna, uh, Diablo 2, which I mean, that's a remake of an old game. But um, (laughs) but even even so Diablo 2 and then um, uh, Deathloop all coming in the next three weeks. I mean, those games are all, um, you know take take out Diablo 2 but the other 3 are all potential game of the year contenders potentially for me um i mean i don't know that but you know they all look like quality games uh to me and and uh, kenna is i mean technically that is an indie i think i i think right that's a small team that's making that so mm-hmm. um and i don't think they're affiliated with anybody as far as i know um but you know, and then there's there's more uh, coming later in the year too, like October and November. So the year's not over yet. You know, I mean, Far Cry is coming out. Um, you know, we've got a Battlefield game coming out this year as well, which is a big thing. Obviously, of course, Call of Duty always comes out, but um, <clears throat> we have that as well. So, and then there's a Final Fantasy 14 expansion happening in November as well. You know, so th- there's still some big stuff happening. It's it's just like. I think we've had a bit of a dead period from basically when Ratchet and Clank came out to now. Like there really has like this summer was 
pretty dead if you weren't in indie games you know um there was not much to play which is why i've been playing mmos pretty hard because there wasn't really much to play that i wanted to play but um so yeah i, I think I that should have been an incentive for people to go out and play mm-hmm. uh indie games mm-hmm. like, you know what i'm saying i think that should have been the, yeah. the incentive yeah yeah, and I, I chose to play MMOs uh, in that time frame, and I had a lot of fun with them. Um, but it was something outside of my comfort zone, you know, more recently. I, I used to play MMOs cr- like crazy, but that it's been like 10 years since I really played them, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And getting back to them was really fun for me, and I'm really happy I did that. Um, I got out of my normal cadence of gaming, you know, where I where I go from game to game to game to game to game. You know, I, I you know, I... I'm going to get back to that, of course, but um, I, I'm i kind of glad, though, that I rediscovered my love of MMOs because I do love them, and I'm, I'm glad I'm playing them again. So uh, on the same, like, flipping that same coin, though, Montreal's right. Like, I think if you, were, if you were bored looking for something to play, I think this summer was an opportunity for you to really explore the space. You know, play a game that you've not played, you know, and, and unfortunately, your window has kind of closed somewhat there's still a few weeks left before the some more games come out but um you know it's like you know try hades try axiom verge 2 there's like a game called uh, dodgeball academia that i've been uh wanting to try out on on uh, xbox game pass you know um and stuff like that so i think these periods like we should be happy that these periods exist because to be frank like especially on the show for us over the years, like we've always complained that there's too many games to keep up with. Like we can never keep up with them. And we finally get a period of time where we actually can kind of catch up. And like, I I will speak for myself here. I didn't really catch up. I didn't use it to catch up. Like I have a stack of games still sitting over there that hasn't gone down at all. Like it's still as large as it was three or four or five months ago. Like, so um, and that's like, that's my own fault, of course, but it's, you know, so I, I, I'm, I'm okay with a dead period. I don't think, I don't think gaming has to be, and, and I think this is indicative of, and maybe this is where we can take the conversation, Montreal. This is indicative, I think, of like where uh, pop culture is, is that we are just so obsessed with consuming, like consuming, 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 consuming as fast as we fucking can constantly all the time, where it's like, if there's a gap, oh God, what are we going to do for the next month? Oh God, there's nothing to talk about. It's like, you know what, guys? Don't talk then. Just shut up. Go do something. Like fucking like read a book or watch a television show. You don't have to go on the internet and talk about every fucking thing, you know? Um, and maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> it's like we could be healthier uh, that way because like I, I, I hate this endless cycle of of consumption and and like talking about everything and obviously there's irony of this statement because we we host a fucking weekly podcast where we talk about games and shit all the time but uh still like i still believe that's the case though like there's room for us to have these weekly podcasts but guess what the show the last few weeks has been shorter because there's just nothing to talk about and i'm not gonna like we're not gonna force conversation where there is none to be had you know so Mm -hmm. that's kind of my advice to people is like you know what dude like when there's a dead period like this fucking chill just chill. Get off Twitter. Stop consuming things like crazy. Just like go, go like actually enjoy your hobbies, you know? And like, and like go find some games that you wouldn't normally try and give them a fucking shot. Go try genres you've never played before, you know? Like things like that. There's, there's so much out there. Things don't have to be two weeks old to be viable to play. Like, you know, there's probably hundreds of great games that you've never even thought about or touched and that came out in the last 10 years that you could go play. You know, like I, I don't. So yeah, go try something else. That I guess that's my that's my that's my advice to people. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's really all I really had because I, I knew that was like a, a major. It wasn't a hot topic, but a lot. It did catch my eye because I was like, I mean, yeah. am I am I off the mark there though? Like, am I crazy? Like, you know, I. I mean, what do you feel about what I just said? Like, do you, do you think I'm do you think I'm go, I'm like I'm a little too crazy here or like? you know is there is there is there anything to that <laughs> no i don't think you're crazy at all i think what you said was was doable I, I was viable there are a lot mm-hmm. of this was the perfect time for a lot of streamers and other people to look for other games and not just streamers like just regular people to look mm-hmm. for other games and uh unfortunately that time is almost up 
because I mean, Tales of Rise comes out next week, and if you're not into JRPGs, then yeah, you have a a, a ton of time to look for. Hell, I even think the sports games are popping off like that. Like usually, there's like a period of sports games, and next Call of Duty is not going to be the good shit. So we're not hearing anything about that. I think the next big release is probably Battlefield 2042. Is, That's probably yeah. the, the, the next big release. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't know. All right, well, fair enough. Um, I hope you enjoyed my my TED talk. <laughs> um, all right, well, Montreal, if you've got nothing else, uh, I think we will close it out there. All right, all right. Um, so, uh, if you like this episode, please like the show, review the show, and subscribe to the show on whatever feed you are listening to it on. And please, please share it with your friends. Uh, we are always looking to grow the show. Um. And if you'd like to interact with either of us on Twitter, you can do so at ITREP for the Hokage for Montreal. That is the number four, not the word. I'm at Thundernut01, and the show is at The Players Take. If you'd like to send us a question, you, you can do so at The Players Take01 at gmail.com, or you can send us, uh, you can hit us up on Twitter as well, like I just said. All right. I'm done. Montreal's done. We're tired. Uh, we need to go chill. Compressed. <laughs> 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 um, we hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you guys next week.